Welcome to Lep. I just had the nicest lady pull up there. This was a big pick me up. And Brida, who watches the video, Brida saw me on the road. She'd just been shopping and she stopped to give me this big packed salad lunch, which looks amazing. I'm gonna stop on the hill up here and have that. Thank you so much. There's around 15 kilometers left to Clonakilty. So I'm not gonna sit around long. I'm gonna get up and just keep keep walking, keep eating away into that 15 and hopefully get a good rest this evening, a good sleep tonight. Pleased with today so far though, because uh, I really didn't think I'd make it this far. Hello, I stayed next to Clonakilty last night in the campsite, I had a good 10 hours of solid sleep, I was dead to the world and I feel much better for it. However, I don't think I'm going to go far today because I want to not just rest and get more sleep but I want to catch up on my videos because that takes a lot of time and effort. So I'm going to go into the town today, get some supplies and find somewhere close by to stay. Head good, body good, feet good, mind good, all good. Let's go.
Clonakilty is the home of Michael Collins, Irish revolutionary and leader, played a pivotal role in the War of Independence and he was shot, assassinated in an ambush not too far from here, around 40 kilometres north in a place called Belnabla. And Michael Collins used to actually live on this square that I'm standing on right now at number seven with his sister Margaret back in 1904. So there's a signpost over here saying that every day Michael Collins would have walked past the point at which there is now a statue on his way to school. It was actually this house just here in the corner that Michael Collins lived in. I know I seem to be saying this with every town I come to, but Clonakilty is just beautiful. Not only the architecture, it's very tidy, very clean, and a lot going on here it would seem like with the markets and everything is open. That is by far the most impressive church, cathedral, anything that I walked inside on this trip anyway. I have literally felt my jaw dropping as I stepped inside the door and just saw how magnificent it looked inside. I've walked past this around probably four times, not knowing that this was a house. I walked by it distinctly in my subconscious anyway, thinking it was a tree. <laughs> it's just mad, isn't it? What is this? An old mill? I'm just outside Clonakilty in West Cork and I came across this 16th century building which is called the Arundel Grain Store because back in the 1600s and up until the mid 1800s this facility here was used to store grain from the nearby Arundel flour mill. It was also used to store potatoes and coal and in fact around the 1830s it says outside this building and this port which is called Ring was responsible for exporting 5,000 bushels of wheat, 1,000 tons of potatoes and coal and large quantities of slate which was said to have been of a superior quality. The building fell into disrepair around 1900 and was used as a storage facility by local fishermen for their fishing gear. I love coming across places like this. This is what I keep saying is like real Ireland, hidden Ireland and not the hidden Ireland that you see in the tourist brochures or the hidden Ireland that the tourists get to see unfortunately but the kind of places that I myself and I'm sure other people here in Ireland would love to encounter for themselves. I especially like places like this because you can actually walk inside them and around them and imagine but also almost see and feel what would have been a hive of activity here back in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, several lifetimes.
Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. La da 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 Barry's bar. I love that that lady waved out the window at me. <laughs> and I, I was just about to say, I love the name of the bar. I know a lot of bars are named in that way, but Barry's bar. <laughs> Brilliant. I just went past a really small house back there with the garage door open and the oldest looking tractor I've ever seen. It looked like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but it was polished like you've never seen as well. It was polished so that you could see a reflection on it. And he was sitting there having a cup of tea with his dog in the garden. <laughs> I just thought that man loves his tractor and obviously loves the simple life. Just a small home. It looks like he's got a good bit of land here too because it's on this patch beside me. And all I thought walking away from there is priorities. Yeah. I love Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I, I grew up loving that film. I watched it like hundreds of times as a kid. I am so blessed to be given this place to stay. It's a mobile home on Sexton's Caravan Park and Elaine Sexton invited me to come and stay here. I assumed to camp here and when I arrived I was shown to this private little section of the caravan site and this amazing mobile home. The thing I love about it the most is that I woke up this morning and I was having a coffee here and I could hear this munching sound and that's when I took a look outside the door, which I'm about to open for you right now. <laughs> I'm walking up to the Michael Collins museum without my bag <laughs> it's back in the mobile home and it feels so light I even ran down a little bit of the road there and I was saying to myself out loud running is easy running is easy like an idiot Open the door here, and they're after delivering a load of food. I was out all afternoon, and I came back, and Elaine had left this box of healthy food on the doorstep, and I've already eaten half of it. There's salmon, brown bread, that's all gone. Yogurt, fruit cocktail, protein shake, juice, some donuts as well, and now Rebecca who works here has just dropped me over a box <laughs> with coffee, a kettle, milk and sugar. Amazing. Amazing.